Welcome to the blessings of Jesus. In today's message, Hungry for God, Dr. Peter teaches how Jesus satisfies the deepest hunger of our hearts. I love the blessing that Jesus offered to his follower in today's message. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Matthew chapter 5, verse 6. You just feel the confidence oozing out of that sentence as Jesus spoke it 2,000 years ago and ringing in our ears today as though we were hearing it almost for the very first time. I'm so glad that Jesus did not say, blessed are those who are righteous, for they shall be filled. The blessing is not for those who believe they have arrived. The blessing is for those who are aware that they are not where they want to be, but are taking steps to move towards God rather than moving away from him. If you're moving towards God, more blessings are moving towards you than you could ever imagine. If you're moving away from God for whatever reason, an invitation is being extended to you to come and to drink from the fountain of life that is being offered today. Prophet Isaiah said, come, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, come because it is free. These words of Isaiah foresaw the day when Jesus would say, if anyone thirsts, let him come and drink. And whoever believes in me, as the scriptures say, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. John chapter 7, verse 37 and 38. Every one of us was born with a hunger for God built into, stamped into our very being. God created us to have a relationship with him. Now, heaven is filled with myriads of angels. But when God created Adam and Eve, he expressed his desire to have a relationship with them that was different than his relationship with angels. God came and walked and talked its metaphorical language. He came in the cool of the day, a lovely expression. There's a difference between humans and angels. God wants you to hear his voice, and he wants to hear your voice speaking back to him. God wants to talk with you and me like he talked with the great patriarchs that we read about in the Old Testament and the prophets and the kings. God had no trouble speaking to them and hearing what they said to him. God talked with men and with women, aren't you so glad? He talked with children. He talked with anyone whose ears were open. If our hearts are open to respond to him, God wants to talk to us. You can talk with God and receive a reply from him. We were made in the image of God, and one of the joys of being a parent is waiting for the day when our children finally say their first word. <clears throat> How often have you looked a little baby and said, Baba, Mama, and just kept saying it over again until the day came when the words came out and the joy that filled your soul is indescribable. And God wants to hear from you. He has joy in hearing from you. He wants to hear you say to him, thank you, Father, for your love for me. Thank you for giving me life. Thank you for giving me an opportunity to make a difference in this world because I have a relationship with you. Now, no child has to be taught to drink or to eat. No animal has to be taught to drink or to eat. Animals seeking water and food is as natural as human beings seek to quench their spiritual thirst and their hunger for the living God. In the course of living, guilt and fear and shame cause people to believe that they are not worthy to communicate with God. And like Adam and Eve, in the garden when God came, they, they, they became afraid. And the presence of God coming near to people sometimes causes people to run away and to hide in a metaphorical sense. You can't hide from God, but we try to hide from God. And isn't it beautiful to discover 
that while we are hiding from God, he is calling our name and he is looking for you and for me. God has not changed. He's still looking for sons and daughters who have run away because he wants to bring them home and to communicate with them. He's waiting with arms wide open to welcome you, to welcome me wherever we are in our journey with him. David knew what it was like to lose touch with God and to not feel God's presence. He went through difficult periods, and it is out of this experience that he wrote, as a deer pants for flowing stream, so pants my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? Psalm 42, verse 1 and 2. When David wrote about a deer, we should not think about deer as we occasionally see them on the side of our roads and in open fields as we make our way around America. We're traveling from Jerusalem through the Judean desert down to the Dead Sea puts us in touch with how difficult life was in the desert. Along the way, one might see an ibex scampering scrambling over rocks and rough terrain. This is what an ibex looks like. You might stop at this incredible park where visitors often stop to overlook the Dead Sea and a very famous little spring of water called the Spring of Engedi. You might know that name from the Old Testament. And ibex are often there just looking for grass to nibble away at in the barren landscape. And as visitors approach, this mama will take her little uh, ibex and move along, and pretty soon they're over the fence, and then they're down onto the rough rocks and terrain. If you and I stood there, we'd slide down to our death immediately, but those ibex are like mountain goats and can hold on to the tiniest little ledge to avoid predators. And from way up there, they're looking way down in the distance to see the spring of Engedi. You can tell it, but there's a waterfall back there. There's three waterfalls. I walked to all of them. I tell you, it's an arduous hot walk up through that valley of the shadow of death where jackals are hiding and mountain lions are hiding, waiting for that ibex to get off the rocks and come down. And after that, ibex has bolted as hard as he can bolt and escaped the claws of death. <laughs> and then to drink from that water, you feel, as I tell the story, the panting that is going on in the deep desire to quench one's thirst. It's a harsh environment in which they live. And this pictures for us the spiritual desert in which most followers of Jesus live. We face the allure of the world. Uh, the world is trying to pull us to satisfy our hunger in ways that destroy our spirit and our natural ability to hear the voice of God. Through the prophet Jeremiah, uh, the Lord spoke to his people and asked this deep question, what wrong did your fathers find in me that they went from me and went after worthlessness and became worthless? Jeremiah chapter 2 and verse 5, maybe you identify with the sentence, you've chased things that you thought would bring you joy and hope and satisfaction and you found out they were empty and in your pursuit of that thing, your own spirit was destroyed, you felt a certain worthlessness. Jeremiah warned that we become like that when we pursue things. When we pursue worthless things, we end up feeling worthless. What a great word for us today to help us understand what it means to hunger and thirst for God. And people looking for solutions to the problems of life are looking in the wrong places. We look for help through the ways of the world, sometimes through fame, sometimes through the desire for success. Drugs can't fill what God has put in our hearts. Only he can fill it. Alcohol cannot do that either. Pleasures cannot do that. Working hard cannot do that. Things cannot do that. But Jesus can. Jesus said, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 6. Righteousness is simply being like Christ. It is having the qualities of Christ in our life. 
David gives us some more clues on how to hunger and thirst for righteousness. In a companion Psalm to 42, we read this in Psalm 63 and verse 1. O oh God, you are my God. Earnestly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you as in a dry and weary land where there is no water. Do you feel all of that as you saw the desert pictures and as you saw the rugged terrain? David spent time up in that uh, cove. That's where he hid from King Saul when Saul was trying to kill him. One Saturday night, last Saturday night, I came into our worship center just to finish up a few media projects we were working on, but the Kenyans were here pouring their hearts out before the Lord. And as they were crying out, you could feel the hunger for more of God's presence. I could feel the hunger in their prayers. David continues, so I have looked upon you in the sanctuary, beholding your power and your glory, because your steadfast love is better than life. My lips will praise you. Aren't you so glad that when we pursue the presence of God, power and glory come along with it? There's something special about seeing the power of God manifested before our eyes, and there's something special about feeling the glory of God coming upon. You can be in a meeting and just feel the glory come down and just feel a whole shift in the atmosphere. It's so special when that happens. I felt that shift in the atmosphere as we were having communion this morning. Beholding the presence of God releases the power and the glory of God into people's lives. This week, one of our international network pastors wrote to me from South Africa. He said, Pastor, I don't know if I can make it through the weekend. I am in terrible pain. Something's gone wrong with the tooth, and I, I just don't even know how I'm going to make it. And, and so, uh, so I, I sent him a prayer, and immediately that he read it, the pain stopped. Now, it, it, it held off long enough for him to get the attention that he needed, and he did. There was an abscess that had taken place, but immediately, and this pastor said to me, uh, I've prayed for a lot of people over the years, a lot of people have been healed, but I've never had anybody instantly healed in front of me. And my faith has now grown to believe for an instant healing. He said, the moment I read your prayer, Instantly, the pain left me. What an encouraging word. And uh, we have pastors in our network from every denomination you could imagine. But we're all agreeing on one thing. We're going after more presence and power in our life and ministry. We don't have to agree on a whole lot of details. But what we can agree on is that the glory of God is manifested. When his presence comes upon us, his power is released. Released and people's lives are changed. I'm so happy for the privilege of going after presence and encouraging people to go after presence. If you need a healing, begin to worship God right now. No matter what faith you are raised in, worship God. Lift up your hand and give him praise. Thank him for his presence and power. Father, release a wave of healing and your glory to people who are listening to this message right now. Father loves you. And he loves to receive praise from our lips. Isaiah wrote that we are a people whom I formed for myself that they may declare my praise. Isaiah chapter 43 and verse 21. That's how God sees you. You're a person who has, he created and formed you so that you could declare his praises back to him. Many people are healed just in the presence of God just in the glory and presence, just entering in to a building where there's presence, people are healed. David continues, I will bless you as long as you live. I live. Your name will be lifted up by my hands. My soul will be satisfied as with fat and rich food, and my mouth will praise you with joyful lips. Psalm 63, verse 4 and 5. And Father, God, help people to feel a deep satisfaction like marrow in the bones, as we just read, coming upon them right now. Restless spirits depart from people right now. In Jesus' name, I release to you the ability to sit in the presence of God 
and to worship him and to feel comfortable because he feels comfortable with you and he's softening your heart towards him to change what needs to change in your life. You don't need to be ashamed. He already knows it all. There's nothing you can tell God he doesn't already know. Have you ever tried to tell God something you thought he didn't know about you? I, I understand the human side of that, but he already knows. He has already forgiven you. He already has a plan. Now, how does Jesus satisfy the hunger of our hearts? Well, we read in the first beatitude, he forgives our sin. We read in the second beatitude, he comforts those who recognize the consequence of sin in their lives. He tames the wildness of us. We learned in the beatitude about meekness. He, he takes that wildness out of it without breaking our natural strength and ability. We can live life to the fullest as meek persons under his sovereign control. Here are some ways that my hunger and my thirst for him has been satisfied. He speaks to me, not only through the word, he speaks to me through the Bible, but more than that, he speaks to me through divine thoughts and audible words. If you ever had a thought and you said, well, where did that come from? If you ever had a thought and said, I could never possibly have th thought about that. And it's a good thought. Yeah. It's God putting something in your head. You know, God speaks audibly and internally and externally. Sometimes you hear it. Sometimes you just know it. If you ever said, I know that I know that I know that God spoke to me, and this is what he said to me. And God speaks to me because he's called me by name. I've heard him call my name. It was such a beautiful evening the night he called my name. I'll never forget that for the rest of my life. He's spoken to me with audible words. I've heard his voice. When you hear his voice, there's something about intimacy that's taken deeper. He's given me spiritual dreams. We encourage you always to write down your dream. Just keep a little piece of paper and a pencil or something next to your bed. I know I've had thoughts like you had, and I'll remember that one. <laughs> How many times has you said that? If you just write down one or two thoughts, you'll remember more as you unpack it in the morning. I had this dream about visiting with the minister I had been wanting to be in touch with, uh, a oh, man who's being used greatly by God. And as I walked with him, uh, even, even that he would walk with me a little bit, he was, had something on his mind, and I walked with him. And he was walking over to an old pickup truck. This is just as clear as day, like an old Ford F-150. I could even see the color, like a, it's old, I mean old, uh, like an orangish color, you know how they used to make them. And, uh, and I noticed that the bed of the truck had a big dent in the side of it. I mean, a long big dent in the side of it. Now, I just want to say to you that vehicles often represent ministry. You have a dream that involves a vehicle, especially a bus or a truck like that. It's most likely God's trying to tell you something about ministry. And the man took what he had in his hand and put it in the back of the truck and pulled his hand away. The moment he pulled his hand away... In front of my eyes, the dent came out of that truck. I was just so startled. I said, do you see that? And everybody said, yeah, we saw that. <laughs> You've got a dent in your ministry. God's about to take it out. I shared that with a prophetess, uh, Pastor Joanne Arizago, was speaking up in, in Maryland. I sent that word to her, and she used that in that evening service. She felt such an anointing on it. Two people came up to her afterwards and said, that dent's going out of my ministry tonight. And I just called the dent out of whatever you're facing, whatever is setting you back, whatever is hindering your walk in your ministry. I call that dent out right now in the name of Jesus. <laughs> what a blessing to share that story with you. Uh, so whatever you're dealing with, God wants to help you. He wants to talk to you. He wants to give you visual signs, physical signs, all sorts of signs. Another way Jesus has satisfied me, sometimes he gives me an assignment that's more than a year away. It's been a while since that happened, but it's frequently happened to me. I get asked to speak at such and such a country a year from now at such and such an event. And uh, I may be facing difficult times, and I'm going like, God, I, I can't feed my family tomorrow. How am I going to be there a year from now? <laughs> it finally dawned on me. God said, I'm going to keep you alive. If I gave you an assignment, I'm going to provide for you to get there. <laughs> and, and so many times that happened to me when we're living by faith. 
uh, at a higher level than we've been extracted, <laughs> required to live at this present moment. But, but that told me that if God needs me there, God will get me there. And he's got to keep me alive to get me there. He's got to feed me. He's got to feed my family. I'm not saying that in an obligatory sense. It's him giving me a token of something to believe him for. If God gives you something way down the road, it's because you need it. And he's going to keep you there and help you overcome whatever you have to overcome to get there. Now, these assignments have helped keep my faith intact. He's given me undeniable spiritual encounters. I felt his peace come upon me. Some of you felt peace coming upon you just as you've heard this message. It's the, it's the satisfaction that only Jesus can bring. I felt his power flow through my hands. I felt heat in my hands, often a sign that God's going to use you in healing. Your hands get hot. If you are in the presence of somebody and you feel your hands just getting hot, that's God saying to you. He's giving you a signal. I'm about to release my power through your hands. Uh, <laughs> you feel electrical current, just mild current flowing in you. It's the presence. It's the token of Jesus working in your body. I felt his presence so powerfully come upon me that I've had to fall down. I couldn't hold myself up any longer in the spirit. Drugs can't do what I've just described. Alcohol can't do what I've just described. Well, they can make you fall down, but they're not going to make you feel better. They're not going to draw you closer to God. I pray that this message has deepened your desire to go after the presence of God more earnestly. Nothing satisfies like his presence. At the beginning, uh, Jesus, it all begins with asking Jesus to forgive your sins. Ask him right now to forgive you for all of your sins. Ask him to fill you with his Holy Spirit. It continues by spending time in his presence, enjoying his word, and allowing him to flood over your life. You just received Jesus as your Savior. Just prayed with me as I shared those words. Write to me. And tell me about your decision to follow Jesus. If you were healed, let us know what God has done for you today. Next week, we'll continue studying the blessings of Jesus. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk to someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as a dollar a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International Incorporated. All donations for Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God. God bless you and fill you with living hope.